Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon. In this video, I'll be sharing some tips for building a Pokemon TCG deck. Now today's topic is drawing Pokemon cards. And of course, when you are battling, each and every turn you're able to draw one card. And in the competitive TCG, and I'm talking about the 2018 standard format in this video, it is very important to be able to draw more than one card and add that card to your hand each and every turn. And the reason you want to draw multiple cards each and every turn is it will help you win a battle quicker. It'll get more energy into your hand. It will get basic Pokemon if you need those for your bench. It will help you get evolution Pokemon and then some items you can attach to your Pokemon. Now in the competitive TCG, there are several different Pokemon and trainer cards that are really a staple of many different decks out there. At the very minimum, you're going to want to use four copies of both Professor Sycamore and Supporter N. And then depending on your deck, you may be able to mix in some of the other Pokemon. So later in this video, I'll be showing all of these cards in detail and stating the strategies around each and every one of these cards. But again, if you're building a deck, you are going to want to have some type of strategy for drawing additional cards each and every turn. So I'll get into the different cards now. Okay, so first I'll show the trainer cards that are used to draw cards into your hand. Now there are two very popular supporter cards that are really a staple in any deck out there, and almost every deck uses four of each. The first would be Supporter N, and you can find this card in many different sets out there. This is from the Noble Victory set, but you can also find it in Fates Collide. That is the newest set. And when you're building a deck, it may be a little bit confusing, but Fates Collide, for example, is in the standard format, and N is in that set. Now, if you have a card that is from an older set, but it is reprinted in a newer set, you can use that older card. So Supporter N says the following. Each player shovels his or her hand into his or her deck. Then, each player draws a card for each of his or her remaining prize cards. So you see this card being used a lot at the beginning of games when both players have six prize cards. Now it can also be used if you know that your opponent has cards that they want to use in their hand. Maybe they use something like Magical Ribbon on Sylveon GX and put three cards they want into their hand. You can then use N to have them shuffle those cards back into their deck. You can also use this card later in game, specifically if you're losing, you may want to use this card and make your opponent maybe get one or two cards into their hand if they're ahead and have only a couple of prize cards left. Now later in games, of course, if you are winning, this card is not very useful. The one that you're going to want to use is Professor Sycamore. Now this one is from the Breakpoint set. It's also in many different sets out there. I believe there is a full art version of Professor Sycamore in the Steam Siege set. Now this just says to discard your hand and draw seven cards. So this is really like starting over at the beginning of the game. Of course, you draw seven cards. Now with this, you do discard all the cards in your hand. So you may want to try and discard Pokemon if you have those left in your hand. That way you can use something like a rescue stretcher to get those cards back later. Or you can try and leave energy cards in your hand and then use something like special charge or anything that can retrieve energy cards from your discard pile. But this trainer works better at the end of games if you only have a couple of prize cards left. That way you can get a fuller hand and do more with the cards in your hand. Also, if your opponent is struggling and not doing anything turn after turn, you don't want to play N and give them a new hand. You just want to use this card and add cards to your hand and just leave your opponent's hand alone. So those are the two most popular supporter cards right now for drawing Pokemon cards. So there are other trainer cards out there that allow you to draw cards. Those two would be the most popular. Both are supporter cards, like I mentioned. The difference between something like an item and a supporter, a supporter card you only can use once per turn. You can use multiple item cards per turn. Now another type of card to allow you to draw cards would be something like a Professor Kakui, and this is used in conjunction with a Choice Band Trainer if you're facing a GX or an EX. 
It says to draw two cards. During this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's a way to increase the attack power of your moves, add cards to your hand, and then something like a GX card that may have over 200 HP, it can make it that much easier to knock out in one or two moves if you do an additional 20 damage. So this is really better used when you have a card set up and ready to attack Professor Sycamore and N better when you're just trying to get cards into your hand to then attach to your Pokemon. Now it's very important with your deck, if you have four copies of each, for example, N and Professor Sycamore, you want to be able to get to those supporter cards quickly. And the best way to do that is to use Tapu Lele GX, and this is from the Guardians Rising set. This is the main reason that this card is so valuable. It's in a very high demand, and almost every deck out there has multiple copies of this card. Really, its ability, Wonder Tag, is the main reason for using this card. It just says when you place Tapu Lele GX from your hand on your bench, you may search your deck for a supporter card and add it to your hand. So you can play Tapu Lele down on your bench and then search your deck for an N or a Professor Sycamore. I know in the competitive TCG, Bridget is a very popular supporter card to start the game. That way you can put three basic Pokemon or one EX card on your bench. So you want to use Tapu Lele to get to the supporter cards that draw cards out. Now the way you find Tapu Lele, if you don't start the game with that in your hand, would be using an Ultra Ball Trainer. Ultra Ball on several different sets out there. This one is from the Shining Legends set. You have to discard two cards from your hand and then your search your deck for Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. So this way you can potentially discard two cards that you really don't care about, find Tapu Lele, put it down on your bench, for example, go and get a Professor Sycamore and then discard the remaining cards, if you have any at all in your hand, and then draw seven new cards. So that's really the main method of getting those supporter cards into your hand. Use Ultra Ball to get to Tapu Lele, put Tapu Lele down on the bench, and then use its ability to find a supporter that allows you to draw cards. And really, the ability to draw cards just gives you more options each and every turn to get the Pokemon you want set up quicker or maybe get a Pokemon you want into the active Pokemon spot. So that's really it for the trainers that help you draw cards into your hand. Now there's also several options for Pokemon. So the main Pokemon used for drawing cards in your hand would be Octillery. So I always try and use a 2-2 line of Remoraid and Octillery in decks that I feature this Pokemon line. Usually you try and not use Remoraid in the active Pokemon spot. I use this one from the Breakthrough set. That way if you are forced to put Remoraid in the active Pokemon spot, you can always use Wild River to get that on your bench. And then Octillery, this is a rare hollow from the Breakthrough set. The main reason you want to use this card is because of its ability, Abyssal Hand, it says once during your turn you may draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. And you can always put more than one Octillery on your bench and you can use its ability more than once. So you could use it one time if you have two Octillery on your bench and then you get five cards in your hand. You use a couple of those to set up your Pokemon. Then you can use the other Octillery's ability and get five cards again total into your hand. So that is really the most popular way to get Pokemon cards into your hand is using Octillery's Abyssal Hand ability. Now there are some decks out there that can shut down abilities, mainly anything with Garbodor in it that has the Garbotoxin ability. That prevents all abilities if there is a tool card attached to Garbodor. That way you have to depend only on your supporter cards. Another way to draw cards into your hand using a Pokemon would be using Oranguru. This is from the Sun and Moon base set. Its ability, Instruct, says once during your turn you may draw cards until you have three cards in your hand. So very similar to Octillery, this of course is a basic Pokemon, so it may be a little bit quicker to set up. That is the advantage, of course, you only get three total cards in your hand instead of five. But again, you can use Ultra Ball to get to both Oranguru, Remoraid, and Octillery. A lot of times, you may use something to get Remoraid on your bench, like a Bridget Trainer, or I use a Brooklet Hill in my Buzzwool GX deck, where I can add one Water or Fighting type. Pokemon to my bench every turn. I use that to get to Remoraid and then I use an Ultra Ball to get to Octillery. But there are two options. 
And then I would say the newest set to have a Pokemon that helps draw cards would be Shining Legends and Zorua Zoroark. Now I have a deck that's built around Alolan Ninetales. I include this Zorua Zoroark line in that deck. So again, Zoroa, not that great. You never want to really put these basic Pokemon in the active Pokemon spot if you can prevent it. But Zoroark GX has a very good ability on this one. And again, you can play multiple Zoroark GX on your bench and use this ability multiple times. It says, once during your turn, before your attack, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw two cards. So it's just a very quick way to get through the cards in your deck and find what you're looking for. Now in my deck, a card that I use with Zoroark GX would be the Molo Supporter. It says, search your deck for two cards, shuffle your deck, then put those cards on top of it in any order. So you use this first, and then you use Zoroark GX's trade ability, and essentially just draw those two cards out that you just put on top of your deck. So a very quick way to get the exact cards you want into your hand. I love that combination of Pokemon and supporter card. But I think that's really it for drawing Pokemon cards. Again, if you're trying to build a competitive deck, this is a strategy that you definitely want to have in your deck. At the very least, make sure and have a 4-4 line of Supporter N and Professor Sycamore. And then depending on the deck, try and include either the Zoroa Zoroark, GX line, Remoraid Octillery, or Oranguru. And then just a tip for building anything, usually this is the way it goes. If you have a basic Pokemon in the Stage 1 or a basic in any evolution form, usually you're going to want to have more of the basic Pokemon, or at least a 2-2 two to two line, something like that. You're never really going to want any more of the evolution form Pokemon than the basic Pokemon, just because you want a better chance of getting that basic Pokemon into your hand quickly. That's why you'd always put four copies of N, four copies of Professor Sycamore. You see a lot of decks out there with two or three Tapu Lele GX. The more copies of a card you have in a deck, it just gives you a better chance at getting that card into your hand when you're drawing cards or at the beginning of the game. So I think that will conclude this video. I'll have more videos in this series on tips for building a deck for the competitive TCG. I plan on talking about ways to increase the attack when attacking and then also ways to quickly attach energy cards to your Pokemon. So there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, before you go, check out all the links in the description of this video, including links to my blog, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.